Hey everyone, welcome to lesson three on the division of polynomials. Uh, so today you're going to be developing developing a procedure for polynomial vision, vision using division using the reverse tabular method. This is also called the box method. Okay, so I refer to it as the box method. A lot of other teachers do too. Okay, so this is not the only way to divide polynomials, but it's the one we're going to focus on in this video. So a couple things to review. Uh, when you multiply two numbers together, those are called factors and the result is a product. So if I say, what is what is the product of 5 and 2? You're going to tell me it's 10. 5 and 2 are factors. Those are numbers that go into um, 10. Those are factors. You multiply together and the product is 10. If we start talking about dividing, if I said 10, divided by 2, that's going to equal 5. That's a true statement. And I can also say 10 divided by um, 5 is equal to 2. Now, when we talk division, 10 here is called the dividend, 2 is the divisor, and 5 is the quotient. Same thing over here. 10 divided by 5, 10 is the dividend, 5 is called the divisor, and 2 is the quotient. What you're going to focus on today is finding the quotient this number in yellow that I'm highlighting. That's what we're going to be finding today, but we're going to be doing it from polynomials, not from re, uh, real numbers right now. Okay, or whole numbers, um, they're polynomials. So how do we find the boxes? I'm assuming that you have some background here. We're going to use this idea of the number of rows is always one more than the degree of the divisor. And the number of columns is you're going to take the power of the dividend, subtract the power of the divisor, and then add one. So let's look at a couple of examples. Okay, so uh, use the reverse tabular method of multiplication to find the quotient of this. So um, if I'm looking at the number of rows, I look at my divisor, okay, and that power is 1. So from the beginning, I have to add 1 to that to get the number of rows. So I need two rows. My columns, okay, the columns, well, it's a power of 2. That's the highest power in my uh, dividend. I subtract off the power of the denominator, which is 1, and then I add 1. So in this case, your answer is going to be 2. So this is a 2 by 2. It's square. Okay. Well, I guess it's going to be a square 2. So boom, boom, there we go. Now, the divisor, I always put on the left. You can put it on the right too, but I put it here. The divisor is here. Okay, we're going to be finding this. We're going to be finding the quotient. So our quotient's going to go up here. I'll just highlight that blank space. Okay. And your div your dividend is going to go in here. Part of it is. So the part of the dividend, the first term, the leading coefficient, leading term here is going to go in this box. And the constant's always going to go in the lower right corner. This is minus 10. Okay. So now we have to find these two missing pieces. So it, it's not actually that bad. It's kind of like just trial and error. So let's look. X times what gives me 2x squared? Well, that's going to be 2x. Okay? 2x, so if I multiply these together, I get 2x squared, which would fill this box, right? 2x by x. That means I can find this blank one here. 2x times ne negative 2 is negative 4x. Okay, and now you can look here to find this blank. You could say, there's multiple ways to do it. Negative 2 times what gives me negative 10? Well, negative 2 times 5. So x times 5 is 5x. Now let's look to see when we combine like terms if we get the dividend here. Well, I get 2x squared. Negative 4x plus 5x is x. And then minus 10. Does that give me my answer? It does. So the answer, the quotient here, remember, is in yellow. So my answer is 2x plus 5. That is the quotient. Okay? Quotient. So... Remember, factor, x minus 2 times factor, there's my answer, and gives me the product. So this is how I check it. That works. That's what, that's what we did here. We found that missing quotient. In example 2, reverse tabular method of multiplication to find this quotient. So now we have a 1, 2, 3. There's four terms up here. That power is 3, and this power is 1. So the number of rows I need in my table is 1 more than the power of the denominator. 1 more than 1 is 2. Columns, we're going to take the power of the numerator minus the power of the denominator and add 1. So your total is 3, so we're going to need 3 columns. So 2 rows by 3 columns. Okay, so 2 rows, 3 columns. Okay, remember my divisor, 2x plus 5, goes on the outside 
up top is going to be my quotient. So whatever I fill in here is going to be my answer because we're dividing here, so we're going to find the quotient. So that blank space, okay? And don't forget now, leading term. It's going to go in this upper left box, 2x cubed. The constant is going to go in the far lower right corner. So we can start filling these in. 2x times what gives me x cubed. That would be x squared. And so now I can start multiplying. So x squared times 5, that will give me this one is 5x squared. Okay. I can also fill in now the far corner. 5 times what gives me 5? Well, that's 1. Okay, so 5 times 1 fills this box. So 2x, so 2x times 1 is 2x. Okay, now, now we got to find the middle. So let's look at this. We need a total. I have 5x squared right now. Look what I need. I need 15. So I need this box right here to be 10x squared because when I add these two together, I get 15. So 2x times what gives me 10x squared? Well, 2 times 5 is 10. x times x is x squared, so it goes 5x there. And then 5x times 5 is 25x. Now, we need a total of 27x's. And these add, notice here, diagonally, same terms, 27. So we've got the right polynomial, so our highlighted yellow quotient is this. So there's our answer. Remember, the idea here is if I take, so this is, you know, if I take this 2x plus 5 times this, I get inside here. That's what it is. All right, so let's look at example three. Now there's a lot more terms here. One, two, three, four, five terms. Okay, the rows, the rows here, again, the denominator is the first power, so I'm going to have rows are going to be two. Columns, I have I'm going to have 4 minus 1 plus 1. So I need 4 columns. So 2 by 4 now. So I'm getting bigger polynomials here. I got 3, boom, and a line across. x plus 2 here. Okay, first term, x to the fourth here. Constant term. And if there is no constant term, you could you'd fill that in with a 0. So let's look and see what we can fill in. All right, x times what is x to the fourth? That would be x cubed. So 2 times x cubed, this is 2x cubed. Okay, and now let's go to the constant and see what we can do there. So 2 times what is 6? That would be 3. Okay, and now I have x times 3, that's 3x. Okay, so now let's start working from here. I need 7x cubes. Okay, so I need 7x cubes. I've got 2x cubes already. So this has to be, oh, we have to have, is that a plus? I gotta, let me erase that. I gotta make sure it's a plus. Yep, okay, sorry. So we need 5x cubes here. Has to be 5x cubes because 5x cubes plus 2x cubes is 7. So 5x times what gives me 5x cubed? That's 5x squared. Okay? And then if I take 2 times 5x squared, I get 10x squared. So now let's look what we have. So we've got the x to the fourth. We've got the 6. We've got 7x cubed. Let's look at x squared. I need 10x squared. Oof, I got 10 right there. Look, I don't need any more x squared. So... Notice how di diagonally, remember, when we, when we add them diagonally, this has to now be 0x squared. So that means this is 0x's, right? x times what gives me 0x squared? It's 0x. So that means this is 0x here. Okay, so don't be surprised if you have a 0. So my final answer here is going to be x cubed plus 5x squared, I can skip 0x, plus 3, okay? And so that is how we use reverse tabular method to divide polynomials. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and we'll see you next time.